morning, good morning, good morning, and good morning. I'm Minister Clayton Brennan and Black Dwelling in the Fort Network, Multicultural Gospel Service, Bible Cornerstone Pentecost. Um, this morning, our conversation is going to be about new beginnings because we are in the new year. Um, and you know, we just want to talk about some, some things that we, that we go for to get, get people insight on how uh, they should be looking at new beginnings when it comes down to new year. We talk about resolutions, we talk about uh, different things, promises, and, and things that are like that. Um, <clears throat> so this morning on the panel, of course, our pastor, um, Chaplain Selma Brillo, right? Our intern that we have here, Sister Kirsty Mathis. And today we have a panel member, uh, Will Page. Haven't seen him in a while. Mm -hmm. Good to see you again, bro. Good to see you as well. You know, uh, yeah, good, good to have you here to uh, be here on this discussion. So don't be nervous. Don't, right? Don't be nervous. <laughs> this conversation that we have. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, as we get ready to start, uh, Chaplain, could you lead us in prayer, please? Yes. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. Start off by saying we thank you once again for another day, Lord, oh God, and for your sun that's shining, Lord, out, Lord, oh God, and the light in us that you place, God. Help us to be lights, God, not only here during this panel, but in our communities and in everything we do. We give you thanks, Lord. We thank you for every member here of the body and every member that is that is watching from afar and those members in prayer, even in this hour. We thank you. Guide our footsteps, Lord, and, and our words this morning. Let it impact the hearer and let it, let it provide strength, God, and comfort to those who need it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so um, I just... Uh, on, on the uh, New Year Sunday, um, I came with the same topic, New Beginnings, and it came out of Ecclesiastes 3. Um, so the, one of the things I did mention during my message was, you know, resolutions and, and promises and things like that. And and I think I told people, you know, I don't do resolutions, I do lifestyle changes, right? And, and those, those tend to stick with you when you tend to do something different with your life, when you tend to move forward with whatever it is that you decide to change. So the question that starts off the discussion is should people make resolutions just um, at the start of the new year when it concerns God? You know, um, you have people say, hey, I want to go to church more, I want to read my Bible more, you know, but do we just have to do it when we start at a new year? Why can't we just do that at any time, you know, during our, our daily life? So Chapman, I'll let you start. Question, um, good, good topic to discuss because we've you know, we've been reading through the Bible this year, last year, and, um, this year again. And we're, we're in the book of Exodus, it's come out of Genesis, and um, you hear the story of the patriarchs, right? And, um, the resolution, the lifestyle changes. It was was when God spoke to them and inspired them. And so throughout, it, it's not just at the beginning of the year, right? Um, you, you look at the different Jewish feasts, right? The, the patriarchs of old, their feast days. Uh, Jacob's ladder, he would sleep on a rock, and God appeared to him and showed him angels ascending and descending. Well, that, even that dream changed his life and his perspective um, and the things he went through. Right. And so I think to answer your question, I, I think it's an everyday thing. Um, and it can be. Um, and it's in every season that uh, every day God is speaking to us and, and wanting us to, to grow in Him. I think that um, it's traditional. God just wants us to start. Yeah. 
Because a maturity in Christ doesn't come with how many years you are in the building. That doesn't determine maturity, right? right? Just like we know today, just because you went to buildings in high school doesn't mean you mastered the concept, right? right? Because a D is still passing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hear that all the time. So <laughs> sometimes they just push you along because they yeah. this troublemaker out of school. You didn't hear all these. No kidding. You know. You know what I mean. So and and ha, you know it's, and why I say that is because um, when we come to Christ, right, the the Word of God is supposed to cut us. It's supposed to poke us. It's supposed to let us know, well, wait a minute. I haven't been treating my brother or sister right. right. I need to fix that. But if we have the attitude that, you know, we harden our hearts and blame the preacher, right? Instead of taking that word and saying, you know what? I do need to change. But then again, change doesn't happen overnight. Change happens when you want to know what change happens when we yield our hearts to God and his word and take that first step. And, and, and I'm going to say this because I know I've been saying it. But I think sometimes that when people want to change, right, or want to grow, right, it all starts with that. You know, the Bible says in, in the book of James, it talks about the little rudder. That little rudder, you know, that cruise ship is moved about by a little thing in the back of it. That move that steers its direction, which the captain move just turns a little bit, right? So change is gradual, and I think people people get caught up in the goal of this is where I want to be, and don't count the cost of the journey, and they get lost in the goal without understanding there's different steps to reach that goal. Changes from there. So yes, uh, 
if the change is necessary, that's what God's looking for because ultimately he wants to see the plan for our life built here on the earth. Right. You know, it's, it's interesting you said the cultivating because when you look at Ecclesiastes uh, uh, 2, uh, 3 to 2, uh, you know, it says, you know, a time will be born and how to die. And you know that Jesus was born, boom, right? He was crucified, boom, okay. And then the second part of that says a time to plant and a time to pluck up from the plant. Yeah. So when you when you look at when you look at what farmers do, okay, you have some farmers that specialize in certain things like corn or or you know tomatoes or whatever. But what do they do when the soil isn't good enough to do that, right? They 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 pluck that up and they they retail the land and they try something on that soil. Okay, they may then go to sugar cane, okay, or then they may go to wheat or whatever. In our life, we have to look at that, like you were saying, we were looking at 2021, and everybody knows the last two years have been hard on everybody, right? And you always want to do something better the next year. So when we look at that, we take uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and 2, and we take that and we say, okay, what am I going to pluck up that's no longer working for me, right, that I planted? Because now i got to plant a new thing in my life. And so I, I think when we talk about new beginnings, we have to look at it in that, in that, uh, that fashion, right? Because what I did to be successful last year, right, I want to continue that success, but I want to go higher. When we talk about our relationship with Christ, just because our relationship with him last year was really good, right, we want it to be better, right, as we move forward. So what are you going to do now that's going to elevate you, you know, as you pluck up what you planted last year, okay, and you start into this new year? Um, I know a lot of people always say, well, you know, I want a better job, or, you know, I want to be a better family man, or I want to be a better brother or sister, whatever the case is. But the question that you have to ask yourself is, what are you going to do to get there? How are you going to get there? How are you going to get there through that? You know, um, the, the reset, going into the next question, the reset doesn't have to start in the new year, in my opinion, right? I think the reset needs to start a new day, okay? On a new day, not in a new year, but on a new day. So that next question is: Is the new year looked at as a reset with God? Now, I don't. Again, I don't think it is. I think every day you wake up, you should be resetting, right, and, and starting over when it comes down to, to God. Go ahead, brother. Um, reset. Um, well, yeah, it, it is. I, I think that's it. <laughs> let's, let's, let's try let's try to do it a little bit better <laughs> let's try to do it a little bit better uh, this year and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that in the proper context for us as Christian believers uh, scripture says that his grace is new every morning yes. All right, the rising of the sun God renews his grace and mercy with the rising of the sun so every day and that's the nature really of our father in heaven He's showing us his heart through the scripture right. uh, that with the rising of the sun each morning my grace and mercy is new so every morning that you hit the ground reset mm -hmm. I've got another opportunity to do it better than I did yesterday you know first John 1 and 9 was established for Christian believers it says we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, um, that kind of supports Old Testament scripture that if you know, we confess our sins and cast them to the sea, never to be remembered again. So you repent. Alright, Lord, forgive me. I missed that one. I, I didn't walk in love that time, Father. Forgive me. Right. <laughs> Alright. Alright. As soon as we say that, reset. Right, right. He hits the reset button. He tosses that. Alright. From here, start doing better. Yes, and it goes in line with with the scriptures, right? You know, in Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Um, you know, you, you 
look at that. Like that's a baby food. Paul said he died a baby to himself, his pride, and his ego, to put that aside, to do the will of God. And, and if we look at it like that, you know, according to scriptural you know, beliefs and principles, every day our life is a sacrifice to God. And if you think of sacrifice, that means it doesn't come easy. Um, and it doesn't come easy, you know, the Christian life for, for a lot of folks, but it's that allowing, submitting yourself. Because it's not easy, right, when when someone cuts you off and, and or someone is doing you dirty and you know it and you really want to tell them a piece of your mind. Uh -huh. But you have to shut your mouth <laughs> and say, God, praise God. This is yours. This is yours. I'm, that's sacrifice. That's right. That is, I'm going to present my body. I have to submit to the will of God because I know what His word says. Vengeance is mine. I'm going to submit. And act like nothing ever happened with that person. You know. Is that not sacrifice, right? But, but just think about it. Just, just think about what they, what the Old Testament believers had to do, and they had to bring a goat, grab it by its horn. That goat knew where it was going. Right. That goat knew, and it was bringing resistance. <laughs> it, it did. Like, you don't think those animals talk to each other? One band over here, and they know that they don't hear that band anymore. It's yeah. dead. It, it was put on an altar and sacrificed to God. That took effort and 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 then you had to bring your best and it, you had to bring your best and, and it was your money maker too that's right. what life you know think think about it you had to bring your best before god right. and your best was what was bringing forth your income to help you prosper so in in essence you were saying you know what god i'm trusting in you i'm bringing you my best and my worst because in, in that there was a a, you're, you were also bringing your faults and failures that's right, that's right. before him. And so when we think about it you know, that way, our, our lives, every day, it's a reset. Yesterday's gone. Today I'm in need. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yesterday's over, Brother Seth. We can't go back and change anything about yesterday. Right. It's, gone. it's gone. We have to move forward in the new. <laughs> when I think of reset, I think of repentance. I think yes. of refreshing, a new beginning, a new start. However, grace and mercy is what really comes to my mind. Yes. It's a second chance, and we take it for granted each and every day we wake up. The air that we breathe, open our eyes, walking on our feet, that's yeah. grace and mercy. Yes. That's what I'm packing a whole yeah. lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, oh. I wanted to say something because when, when the brother was speaking, I I thought about I thought about the promise to Ab Abram, right? Mm -hmm. God let him change his name Abraham, right? Right. Father. In other words, the promise encompassed his whole lifestyle. Okay. God changed his name to just Abram to now father of many nations, yes. Abraham. Yes. Ham. So it wasn't just a promise, it took a lifestyle change. Yeah, it was a proof that you yes. had to. Your name, yeah, your Sarah, Sarah Sarai yep. to Sarah, even her name was changed. Mm -hmm. See, we focus on Abraham, but we forget that it didn't just, the prop, you know, living for God doesn't just impact us as individuals, right. it impacts our whole family. Right. Because the blessings of God you know what I mean? Our change that we're doing in our lives impacts the whole, right. the whole, thing. The whole family. Yes. And, and even with that promise, right, the promise, and you look at that God was going to, what? There were, there, were very, there were many conditions to that, you know, many, many things associated with that promise. But one of them was that he was going to give them the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan. His descendants were going to take it. But what happened when they were supposed to go in and take the land? Fear came in, right? And 
Did they possess it wholeheartedly? No, they did not. Even though it was a promise. And so that's where, in change, that's where our faith comes in. In new beginnings, because we do have the word of God, now it takes our faith to believe it and start walking in the change. Because for many, it's so hard to, you know, and, and people, you know, now we're getting into what people deal with, depression, anxiety, um, um, feelings of guilt because of their past, you know, grief, sorrow, which are hindrances to believe in the promise of God and starting that new beginning. So, and, and like I said before, it cannot just be a concept, right? In our minds, it has to be a whole lifestyle change.
scripture came to mind. Hebrews 4, scripture came to my mind. Hebrews 4 and 15. And it says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Um, that means you know, sickness or failures or anxiety or our infirmities, the things that you know cause us. But, we, but was in all points tempted like as we are, like as, yet without sin. So um, it goes into what the brother said, that spiritual development of Christ and why he took this journey. The high priest took this journey in, you know, in being in, in a body, in the form of man. Thought it not robbery to be equal with man, but made himself of no reputation. You know, we, we think about it. He humbled himself, walked, and went through the things that we would go through. Tempted. Tempted with this. And tempted with money. And with ladies. And the Bible says he was at all points tempted, just like we are. You know, yet without sin. You know, and we look at that and we say, well, you know, um, um, you know the, well, he was God in the flesh and he could do that. But wait a minute. He was giving us an example. An example to us that we can strive towards perfection. We can strive towards being like Christ. <clears throat> because the goal of it all is when he comes, will he find faith in the earth, right? The goal of it is, is purifying, perfecting the bride, right? Clothed in white, right? And have you ever thought about why we wear white at Weddings and black at funerals. You ever thought about that? No, not really. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was just why, you know, why, why we do that? Why is, why is the bride clothed in white at the marriage supper of the Lamb? Because it signifies purity, virginity, right? It signifies, because that's what consummated the marriage. That's what, hey, you were, you know, and I know society and cultures have taken away from that. But there's, 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 there's a purpose in what God is doing in us. And if, and if we as believers are not allowing the word of God and the spirit of God to lead and perfect us, then are we disciples? Are we?
Well, <laughs> since, since I've, 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 since I've known to do it, uh, beginning of the year, and I was raised in church, you know, we did watch night service. And uh, I think that's one of the good ones. My mother still honors that. There's nothing like reading in the new, new year on your knees. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, the old folks would say that you read in the new year, in on your knees. Uh, but since I've known to do it, I, I've got to, I, I consecrate myself. Because I've been walking this way for some time, and serving God for some time, so I'm committed to it. Um, but uh, on that journey, we have to make adjustments, tweaks. Yeah. It's like, all right, so beginning of the year, I consecrate myself. All right, Lord, I believe I'm, I'm where you would have me to be. I believe I'm doing what you would have me to do. However, if there's something else that I need to do, let me know what that is. I'll start doing that. Mm -hmm. That's really consecration. But your, your faith is tested when you make those commitments. Prime example of that, you want to take Jesus in the, in, in the Garden of, of Gethsemane. Four times he went to pray. Jesus knew what he was here for. It took him 30 years before his, his ministry started. Jesus was born to die. He knew that. Four times he went to pray. Each of those prayers, Lord, if there's any other way for me to do this, <laughs> let that be done. But your will be done. Four times he prayed that because he knew that he was his life was going to have to be the ransom for sin. He was going to pay for our sins. So that took consecration took dedication that took a commitment he knew what he was here for but before he experienced death there was going to be some ugliness all right satan was satan took his mask off if you will right now, in, in, in that 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 period but it was four times that jesus had to consecrate himself all right lord not my will your will be done so that's just for me just speaking to you know, when it comes to the consecration piece, and that's something really I believe is necessary for all Christian believers on a daily basis. We gotta make those adjustments because the fact of the matter is there are people in this world who will never come in contact with Jesus unless they come in contact with Jesus. Yeah. That's the reality of this of this Christian walk. That's why we should be willing to make those adjustments because ultimately we want to do what's pleasing in God's eyes. That's the end goal. We're all going to heaven. It's going to be great when we get there. <laughs> but until we get there, there's those that we need to impact and they won't be impacted unless they come in contact with us. You know, the uh, sister Melita is uh, responding and she said uh, something very similar to what you said. Also, only through prayer and spending time with God Seeking his voice uh, can we make effective change. Our goals, our dreams, and our aspirations must be centered around God's plan for us. You know, and, and that's true. It has to be centered around what it is that, you know, God wants for us, not what we want for us. You know what I mean? That that uh that ongoing joke, you wanna make God laugh? You know, because he does have a sense of humor, right? And yeah. so yeah. and so, you know, we we gotta, we gotta look at that. I think that, I think that um, as we, as we as Christians, as we grow, right, we grow, we grow into different, different aspects of life. We find different things um, that makes us want to continue to worship and continue to serve God. Um, whether it be having, uh, having the idea of wanting to be a, a Sunday school teacher, uh, wanting to join the choir, wanting to, to preach, or, or you know, or just wanting to volunteer being an usher. You know, there's something that, that puts you in the mind of saying, you know, I want to get closer to God and how can I do it? You know, how can I make my change? How can I start over? How can I be a new person? Because it says in the Bible, right, when you repent, okay, you are now washed of your sin, right? The old person has gone away and God now looks at what? The new person, okay? He looks at the new person. So when we talk about new beginnings, we have to we have to look at that scripture and think about it, right? I'm repenting for my sins. 
know, and, and essentially God is like, he's forgiven and forgiven, okay, because that's what it is. That's what we get, uh, we must forgive and forget. That's where we get that. And so he is forgetting who you were, right? But now he's looking at who you are and who you are going to be. I just want to chime in to get too far away from that about the change also. Sometimes he said the change wouldn't be made unless you met the other person. So you have to change the people you hang around to to That's make true. that change. Right. Can you change hanging around the people down there at Club So and So? Can you change the people that's there in Club G? Right. So you got to change the people sometimes. Right. Everybody else, that's Brother Sam Weatherman. He's <laughs> sitting out in the congregation. Uh, and, and, and you're right. You're right. Your, your change just doesn't start with you, but it starts with your company as well, right? right. The, the company you keep. What is what is God don't ask you? It's not good. Say that again, didn't hear you. It is not good that man should be alone. He was alone in the garden with the animals. Right. The serpent was somewhere around there. But, but and, and, and that's where it goes to, right? No man is an island. And we all are in this journey, right? Um, and we have to be open, right, and humble in order to change, right, to be able to receive Freely you have what? Given, freely receive, right? It's it's a it's the law of sowing and, and reaping, right? And and no, you know, and Brother Sam is right, your surroundings, right? It is important who who we have by our side. That's why he talks about not being unequally yoked. Right. And that goes back to the concept of harvest and reaping. That's right. Because you're not gonna put, you know, an oxen and a bull, right, <laughs> or oxen and a lamb to plow your field because one is going to not contribute. So, in other words, don't be unequally yoked. And, and, and believers, you know, some, some get into these relationships where it's not what God wants. Show me a sign, Lord, that I should be with this person. Well, the sign is already here. He's told you in his word, don't be unequally yoked. Show me a sign, Lord. Should I be with this person? Well, wait a minute. Is this guy, a, you know, is this person a believer or an unbeliever? Right, right. And how should you know them by the... And, and, and that's the thing with change, right? Sometimes we harden our hearts. You know, I want to hear, you know, I want to... You know, and God sends a preacher. God sends, you know, someone to knock on your door. God, you know. I've had instances where I'm praying and I say, God, show me. And guess what? Someone's knocking on my door. I want to know the truth. Someone's knocking on my door and bringing forth, wow, and we're discussing. And that's a God moment. Like, come on, you know, what are we wanting God to come down and write in the, in the clouds, you know, and show us a sign when, when he's given us the body, right? The body heals itself. When you have an itch in your back. Is your foot reaching towards your back to scratch? No, your, your fingers are, right? Your hand is reaching right. to scratch it, right? That's the beauty of the body, being alone, right? It's not good that bad. And so, in other words, we're, and I'm a, you know, we're all in this progress and in walking together, right? And we ought to be edifying one another and uplifting one another. And it's okay to pull the brother to the side. You, 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 you know, brother, I have to talk to you. Right. You know what I mean? What you said. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, Jan, oh, I didn't mean to do that. It was. You, you see what I'm saying? We we can't walk around here holding grudges of things that have happened thousands of years ago, or seconds ago. I won't say years ago. Right. Seconds ago. Minutes, hours. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we're still carrying it today, and we want change. Change does not happen that way. Because we cannot live in the past for change to occur. And that goes a little bit, that goes a lot deeper because we as individuals do that. We're not talking to this family member because they did us dirty. Right. Right. We're not, no, 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 no. Come on, come on. Let's, for, and, and I think this new year, right? It is a new thing. It is a new time, you know. We ought to be doing it daily. But if it takes that time, that new year, this time that you set apart on your calendar to say, you know what, I'm going to forget. I'm going to move forward. 
I'm going to erase all debts. There was a year of jubilee. And we talk about harvest, right? I'm going to be quiet. We talk about harvest. But there, there was a time where the seventh year, no harvesting was done. No planning was done. Why? To allow the land to rest. And some of us need a rest because we're turmoil. We have depression, anxiety, all this stuff. And you know what it linked to? You haven't rested. You're holding on these grudges. Now is the year, the year of Jubilee. You know what? I wish that all debts were canceled by my credit card company on the seventh year. <laughs> but some of us need to do that. Cancel all your debts. That's where new beginnings happen. Cancel your debts. The debt you owe me is forgiven. It's free. It's, I don't even recognize it. And what Brother Clay said, and I'm going to be quiet, it's a choice to do that. Like the brother said, it is a choice. To say, you know what? God chooses to, can't, to put our sin in the sea of forgetfulness. Right. He, it's a choice that God decides. I'm not like God. Oh, it's a choice. Whether you want to be like him or you're not. Right. So, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because we're, we're talking about change, right? So I took my son to the barbershop um, the other day. And... Uh, one of the ladies that always cuts his hair, uh, she always sees me. She says, hey, how's it going up there? Going, going well. And, you know, and, and I always stand by, by the chair as she's cutting his hair and everything. And she was like, uh, you know, so how's the year been going for you guys? And I said, you know, it's going well. And I said, how's it going for you? You know, and she goes, well, you know, um, and she said, I'm still, you know, praying. And I'm, I'm, I'm praying for that perfect relationship, you know, and everything. And, and one of the ladies, the other ladies in the barbershop said, well, girl, just pray for God to, to send you a man. She said, uh, I'm tired of doing that because I don't want him to send me anything. He's very specific. Right. Right? If, I'm, if I'm specific about what I want, that's what she said, that's what I'm going to do this year. Right. And I started laughing because, um, you know, she, she's been seeing a couple of different, you know, guys, you know, just trying to, you know, these guys are in church, but they're not what she feels like God is really telling her to, to see. And, and I told her, I said, well, you're right. If you're specific about what you want, God will give it to you. But I said, but the, the biggest thing is you are deciding to make the change this year to pray for a specific yes. type of man to come into your life, you know, and, and, and everything. And I said, you know, because my wife and I, you know, my wife and I, we've been married now. This is going to be our 29th year, you know, whatever. And I, and I told her, I said, look, I said, I told the Lord, give me a, a good one, you know, and I got one. You know, because the Bible say a man that what? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, so I mean, we 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 continually have to build and build and build on what it is that we want in our life. And at some point in your life, as you're asking for God to to give you certain things, right? And, and it's not the material things, you know, like like say, well, Lord, I want a house. Okay, you say I want a house, but if you say, God, I want a big house. Well, I'm going to give you what's good for you at that moment. It may not be the 12-bedroom home that you want, but I'm going to give you something that you can live with yes. and that's conducive for you, right? So, but when we start being very specific outside of the material things in our life with God, he does grant those things to us, you know? And so, um, which as we get ready to, to wrap up and everything, um, again, it's kind of funny because I was telling the chapter right before we finished that the topic came to me. So as we as we're getting as we're getting to be better and we're starting to make change, right? So next month in February we'll talk about because um, we've already talked about discipleship, right? How to be a better servant in God's kingdom, you know? Because that's what we have to do, you know. Because you're starting new now. If you're going to start new, how are you going to be better when you start? Right? So how to be a better servant. So that's that's what we'll talk about next month um, as we get ready to to, uh, to set up for next month to do this. But I, I think this was a great topic today. I think it was a great discussion today. Um, and for those that, that are out on Facebook that are watching us, you know, share this with other people. Um, we're not saying we're perfect, we're the best out there, but we just, we're just trying to give people something else to, to look at. You know, uh, a, another opinion uh, or another observation of the Bible as we see it. You know, again, the Bible is interpreted by many different people, many different ways, right? But um, um, everybody's interpretation is a little bit different. We, 
get something different from Chapel saying something, from Penny saying something, from Sister Kirsten saying something. So, you know, we, we just have to make sure that when we are when we are talking to people about the Bible, stay within the Word, right? And don't try to be so opinionated on, on what you are because, again, lean not into your own understanding of it, right? Okay, so... <laughs> Forgetting those things which are praise God. And reaching for those. You messed up yesterday, guess what? Reach forward. If you got injured yesterday, don't go on the next day with that. If you fell, you, you know, come on, it's time to press forward. Um, and, and God had to remind me of that, you know, the other day, you know, in, in devotion and in prayer. Because God is still speaking. And, um, speaks to us in many ways, and, but hey, let's let's move forward. Move forward in His name, in His name, not with guilt, not with shame. Let's press forward this year and be better and be perfect. Strive for that. Amen. Um, Brother Clay, you want to pray us out? Our Father, in the name of Jesus, Savior, thank you, Father, for this time. I thank you, Father, for meeting us here. Said in your word, with two or three of us gathered in your name, that you would be in the midst. So I thank you, Father, for meeting us here. I thank you, Father, for uh, this conversation. I thank you, Father, for the hearts, hallelujah, uh, the hearts that are grounded in you, that are here, that are represented here, Father. Our desire, Father, is that this conversation has helped Someone, Father, who's watching this broadcast right now, hallelujah, we ask, Father, that you have a blessing with that. And thank you, Father, for uh, your anointing on this conversation. And we ask, Father, hallelujah, that you just enable us, Father, to continue to do what's pleasing in your eyes. It's our desire, Father, to do what's pleasing in your eyes, Father. I thank you, Father, for anointing us for excellence, anointing us, Father, to fulfill what you would have for us to do. Hallelujah, here on the earth, Father. Amen. 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 And before Amen. we uh, before we close out, a couple of comments that were put up. Um, Sister Melita said, "Of course, great talk." Uh, Elder Young said, "Hey, it's a choice." Um, you know, and, and uh, Brother Eric Moore said, "Hey, uh, again, let go and let God." And, and that's what we, we truly have to do on that. Uh, Brother Gardner, uh, he sent in in the words of Benjamin Elijah, "Not just move forward, but fall forward always." And he said it was a great talk. Again, you know, we, we thank everybody that that um, that tuned in this morning. Those that have made comments, um, we thank those that will go and look at this later again. Share this with somebody yes. uh, to let them see that you know, hey, we're still in the worshiping business, and God is still in the blessing business. So, man, um, as we get ready to uh, to to go into 2022 again, we're talking about new beginnings, right? Uh, make a change in your life. Uh, it can start today. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to start. You know. Uh, tomorrow, it can start today because as we know, tomorrow's not promised, right? So uh, the, the easiest prayer you can put out there is say, Lord, forgive me for the things that I've done in the past. Make me new today so I can be better for you tomorrow. Amen. Praise God. Again, we're, we're not here to serve people, but we're here to serve God for the people. And, and we, we have to remember that as we, as we uh, get ready to, again, tackle this new so, um, I, again, I'm Minister Clayton Bridget, and this has been the Fort Memphis Multicultural Gospel Service uh, Cornerstone Table Talk. Uh, thank you, and as always, we say here in our service, love God, love people.